Good morning. It is another day of working in a shop. We're working on the Bombi. We're back on the back end of the Bombi. The big bad back end of the Bombi. Which is kind of like the front because you got the engine and the radiator. So there's a couple of you that want to argue with me about why this fan won't work. I'm just telling you right now it's going to. We're going to make it work right now. Let's get you an update on out there. We'll bring you back and show you when something's actually happening. All right, what's next? You can go home now, Tom. I'm done, I'm done. Do you want to use uh, rib nuts? Rib nuts. They're pretty fun. Yeah, let's do rib nuts. Oh, that'll do it. That's so cool. Done. It's kind of smash out on the inside like a rivet. That's why they're called a rib nut. It's a hybrid? Yeah, it's a nut. It's a rivet. It's a rib nut. If I look tired, it's because I had a long weekend watching my kid race mountain bikes up in Manti. So yeah, Carter did pretty good. He moved up four places, came in 20th out of like 53 kids. How was it? It was a lot. Nice. I've got no excuse. There was a couple questions about how's it going to work to be blowing hot air from the engine on the radiator and the the answer to that just is, fine. Just fine. The answer to that is the uh, the heat in an engine bay, um, most of it's coming from the air that's being dumped there that just came through the radiator. Since that isn't happening now because we're blowing the air the other way, there's going to be some heat radiate off that, but not enough to really affect the efficiency of the radiator. The true efficiency compromise is the mechanics of this Blowing. axial fan, which has some... Uh, radial fan tendencies you can't get it out of them but it's not enough to matter we might have like a five percent reduction or something i'm not worried about it and so should you you should not shouldn't be worried don't worry so somehow we got a seal somewhere else. we'll figure that out later um wind lace well uh, yeah i'm thinking spray foam uh something I, if, okay. if it even needs it yeah Okay, future us, we'll worry about that. Great Scott! So I hear that somebody stopped by the yard with four different soft drinks. They are challenging me to a soft drink challenge. Now, I don't even know what that means. I'll go get him. Yeah, go get him. Apparently he's already done this with Paul, maybe Robbie, I don't know. Yeah, is it gonna be like a super hot, spicy soft Dude, drink? I got one of those. You need to eat one of those peanuts. I saw your reaction. I don't want anything to do with those peanuts. My whole torso and head was sweating from eating one little peanut. For like an hour. It was rugged, man. <laughs> Carbonated water, corn sugar, and corn sweetener. That's normal. Vegetable, glycerin, natural, artificial flavors. Blah, blah, blah. It's Mountain Dew. Good to meet you, Gary. My spaceship. Tom? My spaceship. Yeah. I made so, the other day. Oh, so right you, you said you did this with Paul? Yeah. And how, how did that go? Uh, he said, it's not bad, but I wouldn't go back. We're okay, gonna try let's this. See your reaction. So Paul says it's not bad, but he wouldn't go buy it. It's only made in Kentucky, L81, and I grew up calling it Kentucky Swamp Water. <laughs> so this has been around well, a long time. I don't know why you want to try it then. <laughs> it doesn't smell bad. <laughs> it's almost. It's not as sharp as most. I like it. It's not as sharp as most soft drinks. Ginger ale to me, kind of like it's. Yeah, not it's as... definitely got a ginger ale to it. Mm, not a fan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky swamp water, eh? Well, it's yeah. way better than swamp water. I'm gonna give it a solid. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten, and that's what I give root beer. So. Really? That was pretty good. Yeah. 
I would what steal that out of Paul's fridge. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Y'all take care. Thank you. Fantastic. You like that? Yeah. Okay, so the premise here is a flat plate that bolts onto this with an arch in it that fits pretty close to all this stuff. Okay, you got more of this? Yes. Okay. So don't worry about that part. Here's the flat plate. Okay. I'd like to leave enough room on this side of the radiator to put an electric puller fan if needed. A few people have, uh, have uh, admonished us not to grind around an engine we're planning on using because we could damage it. And that's true, and we probably should cover it, but we're not. And the reason why it's going to be okay is because we're pulling this clear down. We're pulling the heads off of this thing. So if there's anything that ended up in the cylinders, I don't know how, because these runners are from the top of this. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to make sure it's clean when we assemble it. You're right. We shouldn't do that. Where we are. And we will continue to do so. Mark the middle and we can trace it out with a compass. It's perfect. Or we'll just go with that. I got you one of those nibbler tools. That would be amazing. Would you use it? Yeah. You'd nibble? How'd we do? It's perfect. What do you got going on above? The, the bed rail. Okay. This is going to be independent of that. So this is going to rib nut into the top piece and into this. And that's going to be the connection. So we just need to be up this high right now. One, two, whip. Yeah. Okay. See how this fits. Oh, come look at this. I'm getting blown away over here. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's a perfect fit. Perfect, yep. Okay. All right, let's How do we lock this thing yeah. down? Let's lock it in. Okay. Okay. Wow. Oh, I see it. It's doing its thing. Did it do its thing? Yeah. Tab down here with a rib nut in it? Yeah, ultimately. Okay. And it could be the same that holds the Not bottom rocking. of this on. Yeah. All right, this is it. Beautiful. Thanks, man. I made it out of metal. Coming right along. Got a couple questions about how the... Was I yelling? Yes. <laughs> anyway, they were wondering how this fan, like if there was enough clearance between the fan shroud and the fan, and I hope so. So we've got a lot stiffer motor mounts in this, and we got, you know, ideally we'd have less than a quarter inch, like 3 16 would be like the most efficient way to make a fan 
hard to have that because the fan rocks. There's some modern engines that actually mount the fan shroud to the motor and then they use a flexible uh, connector that goes to the, the shroud that goes on the radiator so that they can have that optimal design. But ours isn't going to be optimal, but it will be sufficient. It wouldn't be the minimum if it wasn't the minimum. Okay. We've got about three quarters of an inch nominal, like fan shroud clearance. There's a little bit less in some places, a little bit more in other places. But nominally, we are three quarters of an inch. It's a good amount. Yeah. All the way around. The motor is yeah. going to rock this way. And not very much. You've got pretty tight mounts. So if the Bombi tips over and rolls down a hill, there's a chance the fan will hit the shroud. Okay, Tom. I guess do you want to suit up and... Yeah, let's weld those on. There has been a couple comments about the structure on the back of this, and you can see that this is not just a shroud. This is also going to be structure by the time these are all bolted together and then whatever we took out here, it's gonna be back. As long as we torque everything to spec. Look at that. That's stiffen enough. Yeah, by the time we get that L bracket trout yeah. on the top, and then the bar across the top, that's gonna be rock solid. That thing's just gonna be stuffing air through the radiator, like just It'll have nowhere else to go. Mm -mm. It's gonna be cool, pun intended. So in an effort to keep our fat dogs from getting too much fatter, Jamie's been working all day on this. So we're gonna uh, like ration out a week's worth of food and then Ed will have that to pull from instead of the way we have been doing it, which is an unlimited amount of treats and food. So. Dogs are probably going to be unhappy about this, but they're going to be in better shape. Dogs need to be able to jump in the vehicle on their own or they can't ride. Full cup. She's watching. Make sure we do it right. Sometimes in the excitement I do that, you know, I just weld it all together. I've never seen it. <laughs> you know, in the heat of battle, things happen. Things happen. A lot of chaos. When you build something like this from scratch, you can't just like, okay, today we're going to build the entire brake system. And then tomorrow we'll build the entire like drivetrain. And then the next day we'll build the entire steering system or whatever it is. You can't do that. You kind of have to like, kind of like, you know what it's like? It's like jacking up an old house that's sagged. So if you have an old house that's settled really bad and they decide that it's worth saving and they can put a good foundation under it, they have to jack a little bit here and a little bit here. And they try to do it like all at the same time. And they try to get it leveled out and sometimes there's like 40 jacks in there and they're jacking them like, you know, a 32nd of an inch, that's this many millimeters. And they just do it until it's all built back up and level. And that's kind of what it's like building these. It is. And you know what they use? Dunnage. This is hot. Tom. So we made it so that we can take this top shroud off without having to drain any coolant because we've got this plate. Everything bolts from this side. Oh man, this is coming together. That is looking good. It's doing exactly what Colby wants. Yes. Come on the B. It's like a B-17 bomber. Like. Put some wing laps on it so it doesn't wear a hole. Maybe. 
No, you missed, dude. You missed your line. I know, on purpose. I modified it. I always measure, mark, and then modify. Noise! Okay, look at that. And then this will be up like that. You okay with that? I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's gonna be good. I can't believe how much hotter it is with safety glass. They really melt you down, huh? Yeah, like it's, it's like the straw that, that breaks my back, yeah. I think this is gonna cool good. I think it's gonna be way stronger than it was even before we chopped out the back. There's a possibility it's lighter too by the time we get done building it. All but, wins. Yeah, it's a win-win-win. I'm not gonna be here tomorrow. Tom's gonna be working on the Bombi. There's a part of it he really, really wants to work on, which is... The seats. He wants to work on the seats. I'm actually excited about the seats too, so I'm kind of bummed I'm not going to be here, but I'll see you the next day when Tom's off. We'll be back like that. Oh yeah. Okay, check these out. These are custom ordered. We picked all the colors, black and yellow, obviously for Matt's off road, but also it perfectly fits for the Bomb B. And look at this. They went over the top. They embroidered our logo right into these. That is so cool. PRP, they make these really long bench seats. You can pick any size, any length that you want, any color that you want. So these seats are gonna fit perfectly in the Bombi because we measured and they are lighter, they're more comfortable and they look amazing. Super excited for these. All right, I think this is how the Bombi is gonna work. You drive right here. There's a gas pedal, a gas pedal. And then these are brakes, they're only brakes, so you can only pull them back. They could go here, but I think they're gonna go here. I don't know, but this is it. Bombi simulator. The old seats were so heavy, there's gonna be a huge weight savings with these new seats. We needed like three guys to haul those other ones off. Yeah, they were awful. These are awesome. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's gonna come up, I think, to about here. I'd really like to be able to see out the back window when we're done with this Bombi. So that bed we make for the back needs to be lower, and these seats can come up. We'll actually be able to use the window for the first time ever. All right, it needs to come up for sure, but it's gonna be good. I don't know, it might be a tight fit with three people, but it was always a tight fit with three people. I don't know that there's anything we could do about that, but it's gonna be comfy. Could we fit three of me in here? I, think I we mean, can. You, you squeeze Rhett right there. Rhett, Greg, or Jake. Yeah, if we go up about four inches, six inches, then this thing will be awesome. All right, let's get the front seat figured out. So I only ordered lap belts for the Bombi. If you don't see us wearing a seat belt, we probably have our lap belt on. It's okay. It's a pretty low speed vehicle. See, they were great. Ugh. I'm going over. Is that a rollover test? What was that? Well, you know, when we're going up the sand shoot. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Okay, time for the real test. So we got to give the back guys a little bit of leg room. And we have to have enough room for our dash up here. So maybe like right there, it's going to fall right over. I'll try it anyway. You know, we mentioned extending the cab out to the back, but what about out to the top? Headroom. Uh, headroom? Oh, well, you have plenty. I'm fine. If I got my seatbelt on, I won't bonk. Legroom is not bad. Am I? Does that go forward or back? Legroom's okay right there. 
I'm back all the way. I, I can push the whole thing back. Yeah. Mount them in here somewhere. We gotta, the dash is gonna have to be narrow or we're gonna be hitting our knees. We could make it right here, but I have a super cool plan for the dash. So we don't need it to be huge. It's just gonna be right in there. And then our steering sticks. Okay, let me try the back. Oh boy. This is very low. This is not how it's gonna be. That's a lot of room, although I can't see anything. <laughs> I need to get the back a lot higher. It's gonna be cozy, but workable. Hey Ed, what do you think about the seats? Yeah, they look nice. Yeah, really nice. Have you ridden in this before? Oh yeah, a number of times. All right. Well, we'll have to get it out again and take you on a ride. I don't know what to say. I'm just like, they're just comfy. They're nice and wide. I don't really like the seats that push up against you. It's nice and open. Look how tiny he looks in that seat. Yeah, the seat does feel really big on me. <laughs> All right, we need some floor mounts still, but this is where they're going. These are gonna work awesome. Hi, you may be wondering if you can stop by Mount Software Recovery, and the answer is yes. We have fans that stop by every day from all over the world. Look for the flags and you'll know you're in the right place. When you arrive, park in this lot. Don't go over to the north gate. That's for employees only. If it opens or closes, it's not for you to come in. Somebody's probably coming out. We have a gift shop right here that's open Monday through Saturday from nine to five, and we have a parking lot right here for people to stop in at. All of the stuff that we sell on the website is available for purchase here in the gift shop. We love to see where our fans are from, so while you're here, be sure to stick a pin on the map of your hometown. We have a bunch of different people that work in the office. If you stop in, you could meet... Me, Angela, or... Zach. Russell. Todd. You can ask the person in the office for a tour of the yard, and they can bring you back there if we're not filming or doing something else dangerous. No dogs allowed except for Max, Lady, and Peanut. Here's what you can expect on a tour. The Wrecker! The More Bear! The Banana! The Samurai! The Golden Nugget! And Dig Dug! Unless any of these vehicles are out on a job or a recovery. Here in the shop is where the magic happens. We spend a lot of time in here. Please come by and visit us. And back to your regularly scheduled program. All right, so Tom came in yesterday and put these seats together. They look amazing. They look like they're gonna work. Since I took yesterday off, Tom got even with me and took today off, so I brought Colin in here to help me work on this. And this is what we're working on. Look how good Colin's getting around. Getting there. So just weld across the top. We can, even if it pulls up, we don't care because we can push it down. I think we're ready to go up. So just like before, when we need to lift this up off the ground, we can just hook it right under the tub right there and go up. All right, so I'm just gonna have Colin do the same thing on the bottom here while I figure out where these go. looks pretty good. There's been a lot of legitimate questions about how we're gonna service this axle, and it is serviceable from the third member on the inside. The floor is removable, but to do that, we'll have to take the front seats out and stuff. I wanna be able to service this from the outside. It's not really gonna be in situations where I have to worry about rocks or anything like that. So I'm gonna put the plug, a drain on the bottom, and a field plug right there, and that's how I'm gonna do it. Oh, that's perfect. We are putting chips inside this. This is assembled dry with no seals or gaskets. This is all coming apart, getting sandblasted the entire thing. After it comes back from sandblasting and powder coating, we're gonna be doing a deep and thorough cleaning of this axle. Do you wanna angle it up like that so it's easy to get it in? <laughs> Woo. That was my finger. That's not the bottom, that's where my finger was. No, that wasn't. Yes, it was. I felt it. That's where my finger was. <laughs> okay. All right, we ready? This is a better plan anyway. Just 
feel like that's pretty good. That looks good. Let's do this one now. Um. I have to keep checking to make sure I'm not getting into something important. So we're putting a little bit different style on the bottom, one that's a little stronger, more robust, if you will. You've got a, you've got a gap to fill on each side. Oh my goodness, I can see that. All right. It's because it's not flat. Looks good. I'm not an overhead welder. Got these little patch panels here to keep the snow out. I don't even know if I'm doing a good job with them or not, but. Come, ooh. Start down here and grow up on to it. Okay, Colin, I need you to come tackle Ooh. this in. For those of you that are worrying that this axle is going to twist out of here, you can just not worry about it. We're going to be able to service it and it's not going to fall out. Well, what's going on today, Ed? Well, it works. Yeah, and uh, it's a nice day, no wind, no clouds. We get up to about 100, so we get it done. Thanks for watching. Look at this, we got the air tag on Max, so we can track him when he's chasing rabbits. Okay. All right, Colin had to run to a dentist appointment real quick, so I'm on my own. Wow. It's a good fit. A nice fit. Mm -hmm. This won't get used very often. No. It's more for self recovery, I think, than, I don't know. We, we might use it for rec doing recoveries. Can it have a receiver hit and tend to hook something on the ball? Um, well, yeah, we might. We might put a receiver right here. That's a good idea. Right, I'm looking to see if we got any gussets in the storage shed here that will work for that application. We got some really thick, heavy ones. These are ones from Barnes, I wonder. If, oh, we got plenty of those. This is what I want. Oh, look. Next week. They're working. What are they doing? Digging footings or? Oh, they're putting the retaining wall. Yep. So, yeah, we got progress today. Yes, they are digging footing. Awesome. Okay, that's where those are going to go. I think we'll just fill the gap instead of cut the ground. Since my welders are gone, I'm just going to do it my way. All right, we have a plan of action. I'm going to eyeball this here. Because remember, kids, it doesn't have to be straight if it looks straight. Okay, so this one, that one's about that far from the edge, so this one's going to be about the same. Got my PPE. Let's do this. Not winning any beauty awards with that weld, but I think it's strong. There's three layers. All right, that's pretty strong. It ain't the strongest, but it's pretty strong. I'm finally getting better at this. It only took me a little while. I'm glad that's on the underside, kinda. Looks beautiful to me. All right, I don't have it yet, but we're gonna be welding a receiver right across here that's, that comes out a little ways. 
and that'll be another point of contact between this and this. Do the shake test. Feels good. All right, we need to figure out where we're mounting the lights. I don't want the lights to actually mount to this cab. I'd rather have them to the lower chassis here or the tub, whatever you want to call it. Actually, it's one of the only pieces left that is Bombi. So when I got this, it was heavily modified. The, this cab is homemade, but it did use the original doors. So Bombardier, excuse my French, never did um, make this cab. They're a very different looking machine than this. The only thing that's left of the original machine that was built back in the 50s or 60s is the tub and both of the doors, the front doors. Those are off the original thing, but nothing else. So this is kind of a, it's kind of a one of a kind again. Something that we do a little bit of here. So this, I want something to hang lights on because I want to be able to pull the cab off of this and put a convertible top on it, just a sunshade for summertime, like if we're doing dry lake jobs and stuff. It seems like tracked vehicles are the ultimate off-road capable vehicle and that it's just not true. They don't do rocks at all. The, the rocks are really hard on the tracks. It twists them and does all kinds of things. And they don't get great traction on them. So almost any trail at Sand Hollow that isn't sand, this will not do well on it. It would be really frightening to take it on. So its summertime use is gonna be primarily dry lake beds where I'm scared to take the wrecker or any of my other equipment out there for fear of falling through the crust. What do you think about... That looks pretty good. About like that. Yeah, that looks good or come out from here, but you got it made for that. Well, you got to put some ears on it. I've got, I, I need a place to mount lights. I don't want to use these anymore. I'm going to block those off. Oh yeah? Yeah. They were a good light. Well, there's a lot of reasons I don't want to do that. I don't need turn signals, I just need headlights. I do, I get a lot of questions about, or comments that I should put lots of flashing lights. Like, if I had that, I would, have, it would be covered with flashing lights. I can't handle flashing lights. There's something about me that flashing lights just doesn't mix with me very well. However, I'm thinking on this, I want a very, very bright beacon on the top of this that I can turn off and on if I need to. In case something happens and we're out there, I can flip that beacon on and have a chance of somebody finding me. Batman. I think that would be a good idea. But yeah, flashing lights just for the sake of flashing lights. I'm out. I don't think you really need that. Well, I, that piece there. Yeah. And you could be right. I could just put a plate out here. Thank you. We're gonna uh, bump into anything. And put put those on. This is, is just extra weight. You gotta putting put, it on just for the sake of putting it on doesn't make sense. You gotta put them looped on there for tie down. Yeah, they'll be down on the axle. Oh. Maybe I don't know where they'll be. Maybe yeah, they'll be. Yeah, I guess the axle would be a good place. Just wrap around it. I could have a res this receiver just drive and plug straight on. Put a pin through it and be done. <laughs> That'd be funny. You don't want too much weight like the hook truck. You just keep adding and tap and adding and tap. <laughs> yeah. I got to take you out sometime. It drives through the sand dunes as good as anything I've got. It'll do those big dunes, no problem. And, uh... He's coming in hot. But why would you ever want to take this stand, dude? Um, just to show them. Oh. This is more for dry lakes and snow. All right, I've got some thinking to do on these front lights, figure out what we're going to do there. I've got some more thinking to do on the back where the radiator and the bed interface. So I'm going to do that, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah. No! <laughs>